Okay, so hello everyone, and thank you for joining me in this last talk of the EasyBuild meeting. And my name is Alex, and you might know me by the um, uh, Lexming uh, GitHub tag. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about the EasyBuild framework. And we will do an, an overview of what is EasyBuild framework. So I, I work as in the University of Brussels as system administrator, and I do also user support. And I'm also maintainer of, of EasyBuild for uh, the past three years, I think. However, I have absolutely no idea how framework works. And, and actually, I was the one um, or one of the people uh, requesting, requesting uh, this talk. So, so I requested a talk on framework, um, a kind of guide uh, on framework. Because um, as a contributor to EasyBuild, I, I was finding, um, I, I was having difficulties in, in finding my way through the framework. So writing easy configs at some point is okay, writing easy, blog, easy blocks is also okay. But then framework, it's its own beast and, and it's easy to, to get lost in it. So I guess that I'm the origin of my own demise, I guess. But well, they, they say that uh, the best way of learning is to teach. So even though I have absolutely no idea how framework works and today I know a little bit more, so that's why I'm, I'm today here giving this talk. So this is framework. And what you see here is uh, the diagram of packages uh, that form uh, or that uh, um, are part of easybuild.framework and the easybuild.tools uh, packages. So there are many elements, as you can see in the diagram, and there are many interactions between the elements. And, and this is actually what makes it difficult to navigate through framework, because you might get errors somewhere, but then the traceback of the error might go as very low in, in the stack, um, and the bug might be in a completely different region of the, of the code base. And for instance, what you see here in the middle in blue is what its framework itself. And then surrounding it, there's a, a, a constellation of modules um, that come from um, EasyBuild tools, which are basically tooling and utilities around the, the machinery in, in framework. And if you work like I do, uh, you might find yourself in, in this maze at late at night, when it's probably the worst time of the day to actually get into this kind of uh, entanglement. So be careful with that. Get your coffee ready when you, if you plan to start working in framework. And let's, let me show you uh, more a more a, a more over, overview or, or a comprehensive comprehensive guide of uh, how framework um, is structured inside this build and and what its role, so that you can find yourself your way out of it when, whenever you need to. So as you know, um, Easy Build is mainly composed by a, a trinity of uh, three packages, which is Easy Configs, Easy Blocks, and Framework. So when you do pip install Easy Build. These are the three dependencies that will, well, the three main dependencies from EasyBuild that will be installed in your system as well. And I will assume that everybody is familiar with EasyConfigs and EasyBlock. So um, at this point, we'll know what those are. So I'll focus on framework. However, um, it's important to note that most of the people working in in easy build um, will probably come at first, not because of framework, but because of the easy config library. So they, they will learn that this build is a, is a nice uh, software um, to install complex software packages um, with ease. And that's what will draw them to, the, to, the, to, to our uh, community. 
unfortunately, our users are very good at finding all those uh, softwares and, and libraries that are not yet in the upstream repository of easy configs. And then things become harder and, and, and they become harder, rapidly harder. So let's say that you get a, you, you have to install some software package that it's not yet in the upstream repo. There's no easy config for it. So then what you will do is think, okay, I'll write an easy config. I mean, easy configs are, are relatively easy to write. They are, they are static files. So um, modifying easy configs, creating new ones is, is a, a very approachable task. So you will start by find, trying to um, find some other easy config um, that is related to the one, the software that you want to install. So for instance, maybe there's um, a ready easy config for that software package, but for a different version or with a different tool chain. So you can easily modify that one to make your own. However, then you might find out that there's none. So at this point, you, you're usually the, the, the second recourse is to just look on the internet, just not for the Easy Builders uh, repository of Easy Configs, but anywhere else in, in the Alliance or some other HPC cluster that publish the, the repositories. If that's also not successful, then the next step is to figure out how to install it um, yourself. So how to um, go from A to Z of the installation process and then translate that into a new easy config that you will write yourself. And at that point, I mean, you, that depends a lot on, on what kind of software package it is, but you will see that maybe it's a, a software that has a CMIC uh, installation um, procedure, or maybe it's a Python package, or maybe it's something completely custom. So you might find um, examples in the upstream repository that serve your purpose and that you can just copy paste and transform for the software that you are targeting. But it might be also the case that your software is very custom or does not provide any standard um, installation procedure. And then in, in that case, you might be out of luck and you might have to write your own easy block. Having said that, getting to the point where you have to write your own easy block, it's rather uncommon. So you can do a lot of tinkering with existing uh, generic easy blocks. So for instance, the common copy easy block or the make copy easy block are very flexible. You can do a lot of dirty things with them. Things that you might do and might not um, be easy to contribute upstream, but that in, in case of need, you can use. But the best way of, of course, is to actually write an easy block for all those installation procedures that are not already covered in, in this build. So in that case, you get into the phase two of the developer rabbit hole. So you, you already went to the phase one that it's going through the easy config and library and, and repositories. And now it's the easy block library and, and the repository. So we, we easy, easy will provide several easy blocks for different installation procedures. And, and if you need to, to add your own, you can do it starting from a, a vanilla um, easy block, which is um, will, will not perform any configure build or installation steps. Or if your uh, installation procedure is very close to an existing one, like for instance, let's say it's a CMake build step, but then the installation is something different. You could actually build your, your easy blocking on top of the, the, an existing CMake make easy block, and then just modify the installation step, which is special in your case. And then in your, in your easy block, you will have all, all the um, tooling of, of frameworks to, to execute commands, to, to access the file system, check the dependencies. So all the tooling necessary to actually go step by step and, and fulfill all the requirements of, of the installation. And if that's enough, you might very well end up with an easy block, a new easy block that works for you. And then you can contribute that to, to the upstream repository. If you're unlucky, 
um, you might not have the tools necessary to do your, your installation procedure. And, and then you will have to modify framework. Or another case, you might find a bug in, in framework or, or in, in these tooling commands like to access the file system, check dependencies, or you might, for some reason, you might be doing something in a new way and, and you might just reveal a, a bug in, in framework. In that case, you will have to, um, to go deeper and jump into the into Isabel framework. And this is when you will find the maze of uh, modules that I showed you before. And af after this, all these phases uh, in the rabbit hole, this might probably be at 2 a.m. At, at least for me, it's been multiple times. So, of course, working with this complex diagram is, is not useful. So I'll, I'll show you now um, the structure of framework first and um, its main roles in the execution of, of Easyville and, 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 and highlight the parts that you should keep in mind whenever um, you have to work with it. So the first thing is the workflow. So it's what happens when you execute EV to do a, a, with a simple execution command like EV install some easy config with the, the robot argument to find uh, all the necessary dependencies in, in the repository? So, in that case, um, you have Easyville main um, that will, first of all, parse all the configuration options um, of this session, of this Isabel session. So it will go through the command line, it will go through configuration files, it will um, determine all, all the configuration options that you've given to, to Isabel. Then immediately after, it will parse the easy config that has been provided in the, in the command line. And once the easy config is parsed and validated, and it will resolve the dependencies with robot, for instance, because at that point, all the dependencies of the config are known. And then it will resolve um, the following. So it will resolve the, the necessary steps to fulfill this installation. How many packages do we need to install? And then it will go into the build and install software step, which is also part of um, Easyville main. And then um, the VLAN installation um, will um, recursively go through all the dependencies and the target packages. And for each one of those, it will call, um, it will initialize a, an easy block. And that easy block, the first thing it will do for each of the easy configs is to actually check in the, in the easy config file what easy block class is this um, easy config using. So as you can see, um, the, the, the easy config has a, a more um, lower role in determining um, the installation procedure and the, and, the, and the easy blocks that will be used in the installation procedure. So every, the, the, the source of truth, let's say, for the installation procedure is the easy config file. And then easy block will adapt to it, initialize the respective um, easy block class, and then run all the installation steps. Uh, defined in, in that easy block. And what you see here is actually all those installation steps. So this is what EasyBuild does to, from A to Z to, to actually get some, a single easy config uh, installed. So what you see, we, we have divided this into three main um, sections. So there's kind of the, the first warm up setting up section where the steps there are basically preparatory steps. So um, the sources will be downloaded from, from the internet and they will be unpacked, patch. Then the, and, and at, this, at this point, the, the build directory will be also created and set up. And once that's done, then we, it will jump to the, to the installation and build, well, to the build and installation phase. 
And that's, that is the phase that it's more common to most of us, which work with um, easy configs and, and easy build and, and easy blocks, because this is the core of the installation procedure. This is where the compilation happens. This is when the installation actually happens, where tests do get executed. And this is also um, one the place that in, in both easy configs and easy blocks, um, we um, put more emphasis in, in configuring. So the, the pre-config ops option, the build ops option, pre-built ops, all those options that actually are used to um, make the, the installation succeed is in are, are, uh, um, take place in these three steps of, of the installation. Then there's extensions, which is a step that is always uh, executed, but only does something if there are extensions in, in the easy config. And finally, there's the, the wrap up and phase where and um, once the installation is done, so all the files are already in, in the installation directory of, of the software, then easy build will just wrap up and, and do um, post installation commands, sanity checks, clean up the build directory, also generate the modules for that software installation and, and close the, the installation procedure. So what was surprising to me and, and probably to many of you is that actually most of this is handled by the base easy block class. So the, the setup and the grab up of, of the installation, which is most of the steps are just, um, are just defined by the easy block class. And so when you want to develop your own custom um, easy block, the only thing needed is to actually define a configure step, a build step, and an installation step, and optionally a test step if, if you need to. But those are actually the, the only parts that you actually need to work on your custom easy block. Apart from that, there's a special case, which is extensions, as I mentioned before. And those are handled by, a, by their own class, which is extension easy, easy block, which is a combination of the extension and the easy block because um, software that uses the extension easy block class can be installed either as a standalone or as an extension. So for instance, uh, the most common case, I guess that everybody's familiar with is uh, Python packages, which can be installed, oops. Sorry for that. I just jumped to the conclusions. Oops. Okay, here I am. Sorry. So as I was saying, the, the, the extension is a class is used for all those software packages that can be installed as either extensions or uh, standalone. And, and, and the most common case, I guess, is, is the Python package and um, easy block. As Python packages are commonly installed in bundles of extensions or extensions of other software packages that use other easy blocks, but also on, the, on their own. So that's all you need to know about easy blocks and, and easy configs. And then there's tool change, which is its own entity, which was also surprising to me. Uh, my, my understanding from a very high level perspective was that tool chains were basically bundles of, of modules. So you would put in, in the first tool chain first the GCC module or open MPI and an open blast. And that's it. So it's just a bundle of modules and, and that's what we call it a tool chain because it's at a lower level than the rest of the software packages. But actually it's not the case. So, so tool chains are their own entity and are more complex than just bundles of modules. So tool chains um, are defined in the tool chain class, which um, already defines a, a bunch of, of methods to actually do the preparation of the build environment. So for instance, set environment variables uh, and stuff like that. And then the tool chain will have um, components. So for instance, there will be a compiler component or the MPI component or the linear algebra component. And those components are all defined in the easy build tools toolchain um, 
package. And, and those are at a lower level that the actual definition of, of the toolchain. So these, these components have um, more logic to them. So, th so they might, they will define some, um, for instance, some environment variables for, uh, in the case of compilers for, for com that define the compiler. So for instance, the CC environment variable or, or the C flags environment variable for C compilers. They might also define some methods and to actually um, set those environment variables or to uh, execute and, and to do certain checks on the libraries. For instance, uh, the, the MPI uh, component has a method to actually um, prepend certain commands with the MPI run or some other tool that is necessary to actually uh, initialize the, the MPI context. And so these lower level um, uh, modules with this logic um, define kind of this, that the type of component that, that we will be adding to the toolchain. And then afterwards in, um, in the easy build toolchains package, you will see, you will find the, the actual definitions of those components, which basically um, fill in certain um, settings that actually tell if the, the compiler is the Intel compiler or the GNU compiler, and 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 the same for the the linear algebra libraries. You no, know, OpenBLAST will define certain um, certain environment variables in a way that is different to FlexiBLAST and and the um, and for instance the uh, the linking flags will be also different. But for the rest, the structure and the logic is all the same. And once you have all of that, you combine that into your higher level tool chains like uh, GOMPI or, or FOSS. And that's what ultimately defines uh, the behavior of, the, of those tool chains. So if you need to implement and create your own tool chain, it might be very easy if the components are already there, as you can very easily mix and match um, different MPA implementations with different li linear algebra libraries and compilers. I mean, those are um, just modules that you can combine, but if you want to develop your own and you keep in mind that you will have to also think about writing down the logic of, of those components. And then finally, so this was for the, the main features in, in framework. I just skip some, for instance, the, the easiest tags. Uh, I'm going to skip that since it's experimental. Um, but that's the main um, role of framework. So handling easy configs, easy blocks, and the tool chains. And then around it, we have what it's called the easy build tools, which provides several features that are used across the code base and that um, you will see not only if you work in framework, in framework but also if you work in, in with easy blocks and custom easy blocks. So for instance, the first one is um, the configuration options of EasyBuild. So how can you add a new configuration option to EasyBuild? So configuration options are defined in the easybuild.tools.options module inside a, an easy build uh, options class that has the definitions of the different command line arguments and, and their help strings. And also in easy build the tools that config, um, there's a singleton build options class that will gather all the build options for the current easy build session. So that's um, anything related to the to the compilation, for instance, or um, the, the different options of the tool chain and all that stuff. And, and these options will be centralized in, in this class and, and are um, easily accessible through the build option method that will just return um, the respective configuration. And, it's, and you will see this used across all most of the easy blocks and, and all the code base. So, this means that if you want to add your own um, new option to, to easy build, you will have to add it in both places. So you have to add it in, in the options module and in the config module so that 
um, it is accessible everywhere. Finally, I, finally um, additionally, we also have um, the different um, interfaces to the module tools. So in EasyBuild that talks about modules, um, there are the, the interfaces to the supported um, module tools in the system. So you will see the, an interface for LMOD, interface for uh, Tickle and, and others. This serves to, uh, to abstract the, this interface. And this is used across the code base of EasyBuild. Anytime that you need to check loaded modules or um, load modules, this will be used. Also in EasyBuild, the tools that uh, module naming scheme, you will find the definitions of the different uh, naming schemes uh, supported by, by EasyBuild. And finally, in EasyBuild, the tools that uh, module generator that contains the engine that it's used by EasyBuild to write um, modules. And you will find there um, a class for um, Lua modules and another class for uh, Tickle modules. And that's basically used in the make module step of, of the installation. There are other um, packages in, 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 in EasyBuild tools that um, basically serve to interact with the host system. So for instance, if you need to retrieve information about the, the CPUs or in your system, um, CPU features, architecture, the, the OS, uh, the operating system version, type of operating system, stuff like that, that's in system tools. In EasyBuild tools environment, you will find methods to um, actually access uh, the environment of the current session and also modify it. And in EasyBuild um, the tools that file tools, you will find um, an interface to actually um, handle file operations in the underlying file system. So copy of files, generate of directories, that kind of stuff. There are many others, so I, I'll, I'll not cover everything, but probably the, the main ones remaining are um, easybuild.tools.github, which is the provides all the code um, providing the, the GitHub integration. So all the methods to open PR, sync PRs, that kind of stuff. For instance, I found myself um, some time ago modifying EasyBuild tools that GitHub because I, I did I wanted to use a different um, encryption method for my GitHub token. So that's the place where you can go to actually do do these kinds of changes. Um, another interesting one is EasyBuild tools that hooks, which can contains the engine running the hooks and also all the definitions of the hooks. So um, if you use hooks to customize your, your installations, you don't really need to, to play with um, easybuild.tools.hooks as the hooks are already um, triggered um, in their own step. But you will need to come in here if you want to add for in a new um, hook to the system. So for instance, Let's say that you want to, there's some step or I don't know, something, some place in the execution that where you will like to have a new hook to be run there, then this is the place to go. Otherwise, you might not need to go to check this, this part. There's also easy build to tools that containers where all the, the interfaces to the different container systems like obtainer, singularity are, are uh, defined. And then there's also easy build tools the job, which contains the interfaces to different job schedulers like Slurm. And this is just for instance, because easy build can also submit jobs to, to the job schedulers if you want to run your, your builds um, in a job. So with all this in mind, you might be able to actually um, figure out um, how to, to handle either bug reports, bug fixes, or development of new features. So let's say that you have found um, a bug, an issue, what to do there? Well, first of all, um, reporting of bugs in, in EasyBuild framework works in a, in a very um, standard way as in any other bug tracker. So, the, the more information that you can provide, the better. 
that's the main rule. So describe what you're trying to do, describe the steps that lead to that issue or bug. Also provide the Isabel configuration that you're using and, and which whole system you're running Isabel on. Also, if you're using Alex, any custom Alex? Yes. Sorry, we're still seeing the tools of options slide. Is that the intention? No. <laughs> so it's not it's not changing. Oh, yeah, now, now it's flipped to yeah. So now we're at slide 21. Okay, that's the good one. Yeah. Okay, okay. So so yeah, so this is for the reporting issues and bugs. So as I was saying, provide as many information as possible. So for instance, also if you use any custom easy blocks or custom easy config files that are not available upstream, also provide them. And also provide full error messages and trace logs. That's always useful. However, in the case of framework, it's also the case that might not be trivial to figure out if the issue or bug um, originates in framework or in easy blocks or in easy configs. As the traceback will probably go down to framework all the time, but that's something that might not be straightforward to, to figure out. In case of doubt, do not worry too much though. Um, opening issues in, in framework might be the best default option for, for issues and bugs. And if needed, maintainers can move those um, to another repository if they are clearly not not originating in framework. And finally, if you have a, a patch ready for framework and want to open a PR with it, um, keep in mind that the most important part is that all unit tests in framework must pass. So, and in the case of framework, that means that you will probably have to um, update the unit tests. Um, by yourself, because let's say that the, if there's a, a bug in, in framework that you just found out, probably that means that either that um, error triggers on a, on a combination of circumstances that is not currently covered by the tests. So that means that um, we'll, you will have to, you, you and we will have to add tests to cover that uh, circumstance or that the tests that are covering that circumstance are buggy, actually, because that can also happen that the tests are not properly doing the assertions or not working as, as intended. And then in that case, the test will have to be fixed and updated. And in the case of new features, um, you will have to add tests to actually um, check that new feature that you, that you are adding to to the easy build code base. So as I said, it's very probable that you have to, to write unit tests. We, we, are, we have in the, in the documentation a, a page on unit tests. Um, please check it. Um, right now, it only covers how to actually run the unit tests um, yourself and how to read the results of the unit tests. Writing unit tests is more complicated, but that's out of the scope of today's talk. And we will, at some point, improve the, the unit test uh, documentation to uh, show how to actually um, write unit tests on your own. But um, that's for, for another day. Also, in, in the case of PRs, keep in mind that um, the Easyville framework is um, not integrated in the, in the EV command um, GitHub integration. So, you cannot just open PRs with the EV command. And that's inherent to the complexity of framework. So um, the, the, the scope of framework is way larger. So it's much more difficult to define behaviors that can be executed with a simple command line. Um, having said that, opening PRs um, is not difficult. Um, it works in the usual way. Um, you can just fork the repository branch it, uh, create a new branch in, in your own fork, and then push your changes to that to the branch. And then from the same um, GitHub um, web interface, you can easily create a new, a new pull request from your fork to the upstream easy build framework uh, repository. 
So that's all I had to show for today. So to wrap up, um, framework looks scary, but you can find your way around it. Um, basically, keep in mind the interplay between easy block and easy config. So easy config is the 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 thing that defines what easy block will be used. Um, most of the easy block, mo most of the installation steps are defined in the base easy block uh, class. And uh, the custom easy blocks only play usually with the configuration build and installation steps. That's also important to keep in mind because for instance, if you, depending on what issue or feature you want to develop, um, you might have to go to the easy build repository in case it's related to configuration installation, building and installation, or otherwise you'll have to go to framework to actually go to the base uh, easy block class. And also keep in mind where the different features are provided by easybuild.tools, because that also helps a lot. If you already know, for instance, that um, you have an issue with a configuration option and you know that it's in easybuild.tools.config, regardless of where um, your traceback, for instance, are directing you, you can just, if you have this information uh, in your head, you can just directly go to, to the right place and, and that will make you gain a lot of time in troubleshooting issues. And as I said, contributing to changes is a bit harder um, because there's no, no integration uh, in the EV command and also because you will have to take care of unit tests, but it's just a bit, it's not very bad um, and you, it's easy to get to learn and, and to get used to that. And finally, probably the most important bit of information in this talk is that all that I have shown you today here, it's already in the documentation and you can check it out in docs.israel.io slash framework overview. Finally, it, it will be fixed in 30 seconds. Yeah, it, it was merged to the develop branch this morning, not to the main branch. So it's not ah. live in the documentation, but I'm, I'm fixing oh. that right now. It will be there. Okay, okay, okay. I was already happy since it was merged. I was already happy with that. <laughs> I didn't think that there was a deployment a phase. Okay. I, and to, to your previous slide, Alex, there is actually integration for framework in the GitHub features as well. If you do oh, okay. EB new PR, you can actually do this for something like uh, the file tools module in framework that works. Ah, that works. Ah, okay. It does. Okay, okay. Yeah. I totally missed that. Okay. Okay, let me just finish because then there's only this and and we can just go into the comments and questions. So thanks, I would like to thank um, my colleagues in, in BUVHPC, also the Israel community and the University of Brussels, of course, for hosting us and the Vlam Supercomputation Centrum, which is the, the institution that uh, offers financial support to us. And thank you for your attention. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Alex. Um, to show that Alex wasn't telling blatant lies. Uh, let's see if it's up there already because GitHub, well, refuses to push push last minute stuff, right? So I'll, I'll just show the the local render. Okay, uh, I also have it there. I can I can I can share my. Oh yeah, maybe you can show it. Then we don't have to switch uh, screens. Yeah. yeah. So this is it. Yeah, so this is what this look, looks like in the documentation. We're literally finishing this up this morning. So it's basically so, a write-up of what most of what Alex was uh, talking about. So you will find it in the for developers contributors section, and it's called framework overview. Maybe increase the font a bit on that. Ah, oh, yeah, sure. If you can. Yeah. Like that. So it's in the developers contributor section in, and you will find it in framework overview. And, and you will see, you will find um, a bit more than what I've shown today, but it's basically the same information structure in the same way. So, and um, the main easy build packages are in here, the workflow that I showed you, also the stepwise installation with all the different steps. What is, 
carried out by the easy block class, what is carried out by the custom easy blocks, also the interplay with extension easy block classes, all that you've seen. A little bit more, like for instance, the easy block, the easy stack class. But it's the same that I've shown in this presentation. Yeah, and I think this can be, well, it's already very good. It's very, well, let's say not very detailed, but detailed enough to, to find your, help you find your way around in framework. It could probably be improved. So if people have ideas or if stuff isn't clear, that's currently there or will be there in a couple of minutes. Um, please let us know. I think this is a very good starting point to provide some more in-depth information on framework. Okay. Yeah, so if anybody has any request to expand this documentation, please let us know. Also, if you find any mistakes, also that's that it's very probable. As I said, I'm I'm not an expert in framework, so there might be mistakes. Yeah, Bart has. It. Can you come here and ask the question? I'm trying to avoid the echo. I'm staying behind the speaker. <laughs> Yeah, just a little comment about the framework. Um, um, one of my first contributions, the first one to easy build was the PGI uh, toolchain. And uh, I still, when I work on the framework, we want to get started with something. The tool chains are, I think, still the easiest bit of the, the framework. It, it's fairly straightforward part. Yeah, I just adding a new uh, tool chain definition. If you want to combine a particular compiler with, uh, with uh, an MPI and that combination is not yet supported, it's not extremely hard. You just copy an existing one, you change the copyrights, you change the little components, and it's mostly a copy-paste exercise. Uh, that, that actually means that there is a lot of duplication in that, in that directory, but uh, just compared to the rest of the framework, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. And that's the high level stuff is easy in tool chains. The lower level stuff of how it's actually setting up the build environment, that's that's a whole different story. So that that may be something we have to rewrite for an, an let's say easy build six or seven at some point. Yeah. Uh, because that is a uh, yeah, yeah, that's the design is just weird on how that how that was done. Okay, do we have uh, any any questions, any remarks for Alex? Anything remote, Simon? No, okay. Yeah, thanks a lot, Alex. So um, I'm very happy that you stepped up yourself to do a deep dive into framework after asking me for like two years or something to do it. <laughs> but at least it was a, a collaboration, right? You were not doing this by yourself. No, 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 no. It's, it's been, it's been uh, actually a, a very good exercise and, and I'm happy to have done it. Yeah. Yeah, and making the extra effort to actually also cover it in the documentation is a very good move, I think. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.